Hi guys, welcome back, and today it's all about minor seventh chords. So we're gonna be working out an A minor seventh, okay? So now, when we get to the minor world, uh, the minor seventh is gonna create a slightly different vibe on the minor chord. It's gonna, again, just like the seventh tends to do with the major, it's gonna slightly relax it, so it's a little less dark, but it's got suddenly a lot more application, okay? So what I'm gonna do is go through the theory first, then we'll talk about the sound of it. Now. First things first then, the theory, okay? Minor seven, first of all, will typically look something like this. You'll have an M and then a seven, okay? And even I put it in capitals there, that's probably gonna be a, a small M, remember? I'll do it over here, um, which is gonna be, you know, minor seventh chord, okay? So what's the formula for a minor seventh chord? Now, hopefully, <laughs> you guys can try and work this out. Remember, the minor part of this chord, so this part, is the minor triad. The seventh is the additional seventh note. So what's the minor triad? Well, the minor triad is quite simply the one, a flat three, and a five, okay? So those together, remember that flat three really creates that minor sound, doesn't it? That's the kind of the minor element of the whole thing. The one and the five, you know, complete the chord. Now, when it comes to seventh, we don't just add a seven, okay? That's not what we do. Instead, we add a flat seven, okay? Now, the reason we add a flat seven is because in the minor scale, there's a flattened seventh, okay? So obviously, this is minor, so we're kind of taking from a minor scale, but don't worry too much about that. The fact is, this is the theory, this is the formula that you need to remember, okay? so. I think it's relatively easy to remember that you just flatten the third because you should already know the minor triad and then you've just got a stick in your brain that you use a flat seven as well rather than a natural seven, okay? So with that in mind, let's come over here and create ourselves the um, A minor seven. So A, M, seven. That's how you're gonna see very commonly A minor seven written out. Okay, on a chord chart, for example. So we're gonna take the root note of A. We're then gonna take a flattened third, remember, so C instead of C sharp. So that's C sharp flattened, so coming down one fret. Then we're gonna take the five, which is E, okay? And now at this point, we need to take a flattened seventh. So G sharp gets flattened to become a G, okay? And there we have it. Those four notes are minor seventh, A minor seventh, okay? So I want you to once again, take these four notes and put them on the guitar, okay? So if you need to pause the video, please do. Take your time and actually genuinely try and find those four notes on four different strings and put it together, okay? Now, let me just talk a little bit about the sound of all of this, okay? Now, when you just take a, a, a kind of A, C and E, this, this A minor, okay, or just, you know, the first, flat, third and five, the minor chord is a darker sounding chord, isn't it? We, we relate it very much to a slightly more moody sound. Whatever word you wanna to pin to it, that's something you should have in your mind as the sound of a minor chord. When we add the flat seven, the way I hear it, the way I think of it, is it's a slightly more relaxed version of that straight ahead, dark sounding minor chord, okay? So because of that, it tends to get used a lot in funk, in blues, in rock, it gets used in jazz. You know, it kind of opens up a whole new word of world of genres. Whereas your minor chord, your flat out triad minor chord, because it's very specifically that sound um, of the minor, it's, you know, it's, it's more used in more generic uh, things like kind of pop music and folk music and stuff like that, okay? So this flat and seventh, it just gives it a slightly more relaxed feel and then suddenly it kind of opens itself up to a whole new world of genres, okay? So that's what's really cool about when you get into kind of seventh chord theory. And one thing to bear in mind as well with seventh chord theory is that jazz players, you know, if you're a jazz guy out there and you just love listening to jazz, you know, you almost ignore triads altogether. Those basic ma majors, minors, those basic diminished, you're not really ever gonna play it. You know, if you see a major, written out on a chord, uh, on a kind of a chord diagram or a, um, a chord chart in jazz, really they mean major seventh 
or minor seventh. It's, it's kind of like that's your bass level in jazz, okay? So this is really crucial theory if you really like that kind of genre. Now, that takes us up to a point where we're gonna need to do dominant seventh chords, okay? So try and get that in your head, nice and remembered, and when we come back, we'll look at dominant. Mm -hmm. 